I remember that she would call and she'll be like, hey, I I had this dream and this dream was about um, that the Holy Spirit left. And, you know, I have the fear of God and I didn't want the Holy Spirit to leave. And I really, truly thought that the Holy Spirit was going to leave. That's how much she had us wrapped up in her web. That's how vulnerable we were. Yeah. At that point, that's how vulnerable we were. Blessings, blessings once again. I am Pastor David, and you're here with P- DNA Podcast. We are recording live from Arlington, Texas at Connected to Heaven Studios. I have the privilege of being here with my beautiful wife, Pastor Anita. She's here looking beautiful. You look beautiful, beautiful. How are you? I'm good. How are, are you? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, I'm a little exhausted still from... Our Miami trip, we yes. we went to Cap. We had powerful. it was a powerful, a beautiful. I mean, there's really no words to describe no. how amazing, anointed, it was. anointed, powerful, the glory of God. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm I'm very happy to be able to have been a part of it. Yes, I'm glad you came with me. <laughs> uh, also, um, you know, if you don't know what Cap is, it's a conference. Uh, kind of like the Super Bowl of uh, uh, conferences of Miami throughout the year. Throughout the year. It's powerful. Uh, yes. Our spiritual father, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. Um, he does it uh, every year. Every year. And uh, it just keeps getting more powerful, more glorious. It so brought yeah. revelation. It brought, yes. It, it brought was, conviction. Yes. It brought the fear of God. Exactly. The fear of God. Yes. You need to check it out. It's normally in uh, October. October, and so it this time it was the glory, the glory revealed. The glory, the glory was revealed. I remember that moment when I had that um, first encounter. No, like well, that wasn't my first encounter, but I I encountered God at the conference on at the Cap conference this year. Yes, and it was just amazing. I just I'm still in in awe awe about it. I'm still in awe. so, How yeah. many people went, Pastor? I believe there was 7,200 attended from the nations. From this the is, nations. This is a conference. Worldwide. You know, worldwide, yeah. This is not just uh, Miami or Dallas. This is worldwide. People from Africa, England, mm-hmm. France, yeah, from all over the ch- world. You can check it out. I believe you can probably see maybe one or two videos uh, yes. in King Jesus, Miami. Um. We were had the we were blessed to be able to take thirty be thirty people, yeah, thirty of the church, thirty of the spiritual children. We were able to take them to camp, um, and it was amazing. They loved it, mm-hmm. and what God is doing, you know, it's it's just he's yeah, he's awakening, he's reviving, he's raising up remnant, a new generation, the remnant, the youth. So if you're watching this video right now and you're young, you are the remnant. Amen. You are the one that God is going to be using. Never, never underestimate yourself. Yes. You know, uh, it's not about where you're at right now. Yeah. It's about where you're going and where you're headed. Yes. When you follow Christ. Exactly. The, amen. So today we're going to be uh, talking about the second uh, part? S- second part of part two. exposing Jezebel. Yes. But this time we're going to be talking about Jezebel in the church. Jezebel yes. in the church. Just, again, just the, even if they're Christian, yes. You can yeah. still have a Jezebel as a Christian. Yeah. In the church. So you need to be checking yourself as we're speaking. And pastors, if, yes. if there's any pastors, any leaders, um, anyone with the authority in the church, you know, if you're listening to this, stay tuned. Uh, we we'll change that channel. We actually had a Jezebel here at our church it was at the beginning of the church uh beginning when the church started excuse me and we didn't know anything about the spirit we you know we're new uh immature we used to 
Believe everyone. Believe everyone, exactly. We, we, we never, ever thought. We never questioned it. And we never questioned it. We thought that's how it was supposed to be. We thought that everybody that was in church were. Holy, holy. Holy, holy of the holies. <laughs> that they lived in the tabernacles. <laughs> you know? and, but we found out that that's not all true. But I'm very happy uh -huh. that it did happen. Yeah. You know, it made us more mature. Exactly. It gave us authority. Yes. In the spirit realm. It gave us authority to be able to, you know, recognize. And, and, and now we know how to deal with it. We know how to deal with it. See, and that's that's the thing that, you know, if you're pastoring a church, you're a leader, you need, it's most, it's like you're not even excluded from that. No. It's going to happen at one point where you're going to encounter a Jezebel. And one of the things that Jezebel did whenever um, Elijah killed the prophets, killed her prophets, Baal's prophets. Yes. And it was, uh, I believe, 850 prophets. I believe so, 850 prophets. Um, he killed them, and her husband, Ahab, came to tell her, uh, Elijah just, just killed the he prophets just killed of Baal. All prophets. And I remember that she ended up sending a message to him and Sent telling him. the messenger him, with a message. <laughs> <laughs> and said, I am going, before to, by tomorrow that he was going to be dead, I'm going to kill you. She told, she sent the message. And that brought a lot of fear on yes. Elijah. And that is what you're seeing now that. Uh, the leaders, the pastors, they have fear when they to to confront the Jezebel the spirit. And so today we're going to be sharing a little bit about the characteristics uh, of the Jezebel in the church and how to identify. How to identify. How to identify first and foremost, <laughs> pastors. If you're out there right now. I feel that there's or pastors. Or if they're going to be pastors. Or if they're going to be, if you're studying if or you're, if you're. If, yeah, or if you're in the process yes, or if you're, you're in the process, you're to. being discipled or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you know, that you're going to become a pastor, a youth pastor. You need to be able to identify. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing is to be able to identify the Jezebel. You know, yeah. um, she doesn't walk around with horns or. Or, anything or a black like hat. That. Yeah, or a black hat. With the you pony know. hat. Yes. And with no, the no, long no. dress. No, she's dressed. She she looks she, like us. She looks just like us. She exactly. Just like us. Now, okay. how she acts is a different story. Yeah. But it's very important that you do not go in the cave. Yes. That you don't go into the cave yes. and hide. Yes. And expect someone to turn around. And deal with that Jezebel or deal with the Jezebelic spirit. Yes. So last week um, we were sharing that, you know, I used to have I used to have a Jezebel spirit and I got delivered from it as well. And so I can smell one when there's one around. I can identify. Yes. And and think about it like we were sharing earlier that I was I was um, influenced by a spirit of Jezebel, and then I actually had to confront a Jezebel. Whenever we first started, I remember that you know there was people that you know we were around that helped us in um, the few years of our life to start 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 walking yeah. with Christ. Yes, and you know there was one particular person that had the Jezebel spirit. And I remember that this person, listen to what I'm telling you. She had the Jezzy juice. And we, that person was always the, our, supposedly our friend, the one that cared for you the most. Your BFFF. The one that was available to help you whenever you needed help. The one that would always listen. The one that will listen, the one that will pour into you, I mean, AKA pour yeah, into pour you. into you, the one that would take care of you, the one that would pray for you, okay? And so these, that person, you know, is always trying to look 
to get close. She wants to be one. She wants to be one step ahead of you. Exactly. She wants to seem like humble. She wants to seem like she's humble. She wants to seem like there's no one else for you. Uh -huh. There's no one else to help you. Yeah. There's no one else that can edify you. Yes. There's no one else that can turn around and do what she can do. Exactly. So this person, oh, and very spiritual. Yeah. Oh, she's more spiritual than, yeah. Than Prophet Elijah. Yeah, Prophet <laughs> Elijah, but then <laughs> he went to her school. Yeah, exactly. So whenever um, we encounter this this Jezebel, I remember that, you know, we ended up transitioning from a Bible study to a church. Yes. Well, I remember that, you know, once we ended up seeking a spiritual covering, we started following the vision that, that our spiritual covering was. Well, I remember that she came to us and she's like no she said you cannot go under that covering, that covering. and then she what said what do you think that, what do you think that was pastor <laughs> Let, let's have a little question there <laughs> question and answer here why do you think she didn't want us to be able to go <laughs> under that covering number one is controlling controlling and manipulation those are the main 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 characteristics character characteristics of the jezebel why does she want to be in control? Because there's fear. She has fear yes. and of rejection. Yes. She's been rejected, and she feels like if she can get on top, she's not going to be rejected anymore. In if fact, she, she's going to be rejecting. If she can be in control, then she can control everything around her, all of the decisions. Mm -hmm. She can control everything, her herself. Yeah. Second, I remember that she turned around and said that we didn't need any covering. Exactly. That our, the Holy Spirit yes. was our covering. Yes. So I remember that I was like, well, you know, I told her my husband already made the decision. Listen. Pay attention. I told her my husband already made the decision and that is the way, that is what we're going to do. And so, and I'm going to support him. And she was like, no, he doesn't know what he's doing. He is, God already started a beautiful thing here in, in Connected to Heaven. And therefore, you know, y'all are going to, the Holy Spirit is going to lift. She always, always used to say that the Holy Spirit was going to leave us. One of the things, like my wife was saying, is that she made it look like she was protecting us mm -hmm. or protecting me. Mm -hmm. I'm a very transparent person. Mm -hmm. Before I came to Christ, I wasn't maybe, I didn't walk with Christ-like character. I'm going to leave it like that. Mm -hmm. And so she knew a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. And she would always throw that. And she would say, I don't want them to know about your past. I don't want them to know Mm -hmm. who you were mm -hmm. and so she would make it look like she was protecting me yeah you know she would i remember that she would call and she'll be like hey i i had this dream and this dream was about um that the holy spirit left and you know i have the fear of god and i didn't want the holy spirit to leave and i really truly thought that the holy spirit was gonna leave that's how much she had us wrapped up in her web. That's how vulnerable we were. Yeah. At that point, that's how vulnerable we were. Exactly. And I remember, you know, one of the one of the characteristics that they do is they can be in the intercessor group. They can be in an intercessor group or they can be in some type of leadership. Like they'll try to work their way up until they're like in the leadership. And if you know, even to if they'll try to con they'll get try to get in good with the wife and to eliminate the wife. And Listen to me. They try to eliminate her. Elim this is a true, true story. It, you know, it, it's this is a, a spirit that is very dangerous in the body of Christ. It's 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 so dangerous that you need to be able to recognize it. 
deal with it immediately. Immediately. It, you can, you have no time to waste. Mm -hmm. Because that time that you waste is time that you're going to need to be able to get. And you're going to need the spirit of boldness. You are. You're going to need the spirit of boldness. The to spirit be, of might. The spirit of might. <laughs> the spirit of Goliath. You <laughs> no, need to no, be, no, 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 not no. Goliath. But, you know, you need to be able to be strong. It's because Courage. Cur pastors, leaders, whoever it is that's listening to this and you're encountering a, a Jezebelic spirit, you have to deal with it. No. It's a must. You cannot pray her out. No. No, no. You cannot you, break no, her out. No, you have to take her out. She needs to be taken out. Yeah, you got to be like, you got to go. And so, so let me go back. So I'm gonna, we're going to start right there. They will try to, you know, do everything they can to, to get the position. And they try to, you know, build a kingdom, you know, and be able so what so they can take influence so excuse me so they can take control so they can manipulate and you know i remember you know there was in a time that i was very very sick I, they, I the really doctors couldn't find anything remember that we were we going went to, to hospitals, hospitals we went to clinics uh you know it got so bad that she had lost so much weight that it, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know if I was going to take her to Mexico. to I, I didn't know where I was going to take her to find her the best doctors that I could. They had spoken about a doctor in Canada. I was going to go to Canada. This is how severe this woman, her health diminished like this. And, and nobody, nobody could tell us what was wrong with what was wrong with yes you? nobody could find and i anything. remember that whenever i would feel bad she's like let me pray for you and here you go putting hands on me and putting hands on me and just planting seeds and planting her seeds, seeds. And her seeds her seeds not god's seeds no her seeds and so i that i remember that i was like desperate we we went through uh, different procedures. How much weight did you lose? 20, 30 pounds? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I was very thin. I was you like were, at a 110, yeah. very thin. And I couldn't drink. She I couldn't, couldn't even drink. Eat. Uh, uh, she couldn't even put water on a spoon and drink it because no, there was so much pain. It was in so much pain. And I went like that for like 10 months. 10 months, I lost a lot of weight. I couldn't eat until I remember that I went to a church service. They were having a miracle service. They prayed for you. Prayed for me, and I, I was able. To, I was healed. Yes. But I really believe that it was, you know, witchcraft that she released over me to like literally eliminate me because the only, they ended up diagnosing me with. I remember some random disease that I had never heard of, which thank God that I never heard of it. But everyone that had that disease it was opposite of what I what was happening with me. So I just feel like the doctor just ended up just like pushing a button and just, just saying, going to Google. <laughs> Google doctor dot com and just giving you a diagnose. But um because she got tired. She's like, I don't know what to tell her what's wrong with her. They and, couldn't find anything. Yeah. So so now that we recap and we go back and we look, it was something spiritual. Exactly. So um, I remember that moment. And so if you're a wife and you're experiencing, you know, like attack, Sickness. afflictions to your body, and there's a Jezebel in your church, hey, most likely you're under attack and she's praying over you, P-R-E-Y. Okay. Praying like a yeah. Yeah, and she's praying demonic prayers towards you. And what do they do too? They start trying to win people over in the church. They start acting like they're their friends and let's go have some lunch. And calling people. Calling people behind your back. Hey, let's pray for the pastor. I see. There's something wrong with 
with Pastor David. Um, I see there's something wrong with Pastor Anita. Um, or let's she, pray for or them. Or she's not that spiritual. Yes, yeah, or, or yes. Or she's not that spiritual, but, you know, let's pray for them and let's make sure that they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what they do. And then little by little, they start uh, poisoning, poisoning the, the church. people. And next thing you know, uh, they, uh, if somebody, if they get, ex they, they never like to be around inner uh, prophets. prophets. They never like to be around prophets because they don't want to get exposed. The prophets will expose them. The prophets will expose them and they don't want to be around the prophets. And so what, what do they do? They try to hide and so that's their fear of getting exposed. So that's why they try to gain as much as they can while they can, while the pastor allows them to do it. And then that way, when they're about to turn, they're about to, when they get exposed, they'll turn the people against the, the, pastor's, the pastors, the leader, or whoever's in authority. Or the pastor's wife, or if she's a pastor. Yeah. And so... It happened to us. I remember that, like, literally, like, more than half of the church ended up leaving. Uh, because she had already infected them. Yeah. You know, she had already infected them during the time that we were dealing with the Jezebel spirit, mm -hmm. not knowing what the Jezebel spirit was. Yeah. You know, we didn't know what it was. We didn't. We. Well, I think we found out way, After. like, <laughs> three or four months later what a Jezebel spirit yeah. was. But I remember that. We were um, we were analyzing. Okay, so let's go back. So I remember that we had just transitioned to church, and we started the women's group, the Beauty for Ashes. Beauty for Ashes, Ashes. yes, I remember. And I, you know, wanted her to help me with the ministry because I had no idea what I was doing, and I was like, I want her to help me, even though. You know, God anointed me, but, you know, I still wanted her to help me. Well, somehow she ended up taking over. Like, if she was the one. From overnight. Yeah, she took over. And I remember that, you know, we had a we had, had a powerful service. There was women that were set free, delivered, healed. I mean, just chains broken, everything. It was It was fire. powerful, fire. The department, the fire department had to come. Exactly. They got so much fire. And that, that, that weekend, um, she told me, she's like, well, we can't be doing this anymore. And I, you know, we need to rest and this and this and that. And I'm like, what? I was like, you're not going to tell me what to do. It's, it's my husband and, and God that... Excuse, well, first is God and then my yes. husband. And I was like, they are the, they are my authority. And so she's like, well, she's like either yes or no, you know, pretty much telling me like, I'm not going to help you anymore. And so I told her, you know what? It, I think that, you know, your season is over with us and not because she didn't want to, but it, she, it's not that I understood that she, her body wasn't taking it anymore, but it's because that's where the Holy Spirit revealed to me. You see, she's even trying to control the, ministry, the women's group. The women's group. So it was a series of things that happened, but like my husband was saying, whenever we she got exposed, I remember that you sat down with her and you were like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I spoke to her. Uh, <laughs> I spoke to a great friend of mine, uh, and uh, he's my mentor. And I remember I spoke to him, and I told him what was going on. And he even said, you know, he gave me, he kind of pretty much told me what I needed to do, and I did. And she told me, he told me that if she does this, then you know that it is the Jezebel spirit, and, mm -hmm. and so I remember I talked to her, and I told her, look, listen, I'm going to sit you down um, in a cordial way. And Pastor, give me one second. I wanted to add this real quick. Go ahead. I remember that this person was mentioned to 
our mentor, that she's the one that fed us spiritually. So therefore, because she fed us spiritually, that she Pay attention. Was in listen, listen. <laughs> listen. My God. Listen, Linda. That we were supposed to be paying the tithes to her. That we were supposed to pay tithes to her so that that because, because she, she was, was the one that was feeding us spiritually. spiritually. So anyways, that big red flag. Exactly. Big red flag. And like we said, this is this is the beginning of our journey. So some now, of you uh, may be going through this even it may not be the beginning of your journey. It could be Oh, you've already been in ministry for many years, and maybe you've never encountered. Mm -hmm. I really thank God that, that everything that has happened to us, mm -hmm. it happened, in, it happened to us as young pastors, as, as, as at, the the beginning, beginning. at the beginning of our, uh, of our walk with mm -hmm. Christ and, and our journey in church, mm -hmm. um, because now we, we, we know how to deal with certain we things. We know how to discern. And we know how to identify. Mm -hmm. Yes, discern. Discern and identify. Um, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, here at the church, I have a, uh, a Jezebel um, uh, scanner that I use, <laughs> you know, so when they walk in. No, no just kidding. No. That's just the Holy kidding. Spirit. Holy Spirit, that's it. But um, I remember that I sat her down and I said, I'm going to sit you down and we're going to work together and we're going to rebuild you and you're going to be better than ever. You know, you're going to know more than anything, than more than what you know now. And I remember she got up. And I was like this, and she yeah. said, and she yelled, and she said, no. And she said, I know more than you. Okay, maybe you do at that moment, but, you know, uh, you're not gonna, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, and I'm yeah. going to be honest. I'm going to be transparent here. I'm going to be very transparent. Um, at one point, I did have fear. I did at one point. Mm -hmm. But then, then, you know, I knew my assignment, and I knew what God wanted, and I and knew I, that it was very important that we remove her. You I know? know that you were fed up with her. I was fed up with her. I was fed up with her. I was fed up. I, I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be transparent with you for the ones that are watching. Um, it got to the point where I didn't want to be in ministry. Mm. I, 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 I got exact. tired. Elijah? I got tired. I got tired of fighting. I got tired of, 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 she always had us in fear. Yeah. You know, she would like call we us. we were never worthy. Yeah, we like were we never were worthy. we were not worthy of being able to have a ministry. We, we weren't worthy, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and then doubt started coming into my mind, fear, uh, and I just got tired of fighting and, and, and thank God that we have great people in our lives and we have great mentors and, and great people. And, and we just, I said, you know what? I'm tired. This is it. Uh, don't let pastors, leaders, whoever that it is is watching this video, don't let anyone come in between you and your wife, a pastor, if she's your wife, uh, or your ministry. Do not let anyone, mm -hmm. anyone come in between your assignment that God has assigned you to do. And if, if the thing is that when you, you told her, when she, what did she say whenever you told her this? after she said that she knew more than you did she said that she, what did you tell her you said then what what did you tell her then your season i said your season is over that you're not going to be able to come back anymore you're not you don't have a, a position or or you're not going to just be able to come back anymore and you know she i think she came once or twice afterwards mm -hmm. you know and i remember she would sit in the corner Mm -hmm. But that was it. She would not engage or, or, or you know, because she knew that. That know, was it. That was it, you know. So pastors, <laughs> leaders. And you're still here. And I'm still here. And the one that wasn't supposed to. The one that be. wasn't supposed to be here. That's why don't be, don't be, don't, don't, don't let the, the spirit of fear into you. Mm -hmm. S stand up. And, and because you have an assignment. Yeah. You have an assignment with God, yeah. you know. And, and I'm going to tell you something. If you don't get rid of that Jezebel, God will put somebody else there. Yeah, no. And <laughs> the thing is that the thing what they do is they'll divide your church. They divide. will divide your church. 
this church was almost empty afterwards. And we're okay with it now. But at that moment, it was a very hard process to go through it. Yes. I think the only thing was here was <laughs> Lent. <laughs> only the Lent was with us. No, nah, just kidding. But, but but we have heard it not just from, not, our it experience. didn't happen to us, but it has happened to many, many pastors. Yeah, I, I remember, remember one time we were talking to an apostle, and he told us that his whole congregation left. Yeah. He had two, three hundred people in his congregation. Mm-hmm. And it was just him and his wife and his children. No, you have to confront right away. Confrontation. Confront it. Look, this they is the have, way it they is. They have a choice. Either they Submit, shape up or shape out. <laughs> shape, ship up. Either shape they shape up. up or they ship out. That's, That's it. it. There's, no other two, there's no other thing. There's no other thing that you can. Um, and if they don't allow you to restore them. Yeah. If they don't go through protocol. Repent. Because remember. What did what did uh, God gave them? Yes, God gave God, Jezebel mm-hmm. in the Book of Revelations. Yeah, God gave Jezebel the opportunity many times mm-hmm. to repent. Yeah, and she never did. And she never did. And this is the consequence. And and see the thing is like a lot of Jezebels they don't want to repent. They will prefer to leave, and then they'll go to another church. And do the same thing again. And guess what? They'll come with these talents, these gifts, and I'm a seer. The Lord said this. And I can do this. You know, and. I'm a prophet. Pastors, leaders, we cannot just put anyone in position just because a position needs to be filled. You cannot. That is is the most dangerous. Yes, that's what I was about to say. It is the most dangerous thing that you can do. Is to put just anyone because you want to fill a position. Or because, yeah, they want to just because they have, they're gifted or. And be careful for those that come into the church and that they want a title mm-hmm. to fill up that position. When they haven't even served. They haven't cleaned the restrooms. Mm-hmm. They haven't cleaned. They the haven't. Greeting. They haven't started to greet. They haven't parked anyone in the parking lot. Yeah. This is a process. It's a process. Their character needs to be formed. Pastor, remember I used to just wash, I used to clean the bathrooms and I was happy? Yeah, I remember. When I first started, I used to clean the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Bring food for that night so we could feed and and just. Little by little, your process started. Exactly. So, I think anything else that you want to add? I just want to say that for whoever's watching us here today on on dna podcast is this is a very serious issue um and i feel like there's a lot of pastors that don't know how to deal with this Mm -hmm. or maybe you some people have never even heard of the jezebel Mm -hmm. spirit but it's very important that you continue to do your homework Mm -hmm. study on it study the bible that's the best and Holy Spirit and let be and be guided by the Holy Spirit. I think that's the best thing that we can tell them. Yeah. Don't be afraid. No. Have the spirit of boldness. Yes. Do not the spirit of might, because they will wear you out. Mm-hmm. The spirit of Jezebel will wear you out. Yes. If you do not. Do not confront, compromise. Do not compromise. And because you are going to pay a price for that. Yes. And so the sooner you deal with it, like as soon as you see that it's starting to happen, you cancel cut that, it off. Cancel that assignment. Cut it off. Take them to the you, office. You cannot. Talk to them. You cannot pray her out. You cannot pray no. her out. No. You have to confront her. Yes. You have to confront. Oh, and also, like we said last last uh, last podcast, that it can also be a male. Yes. So... If you've seen these characteristics, you sh- you heard, you know, some of our testimony. It's a lot more. We could be here, you know, we, hours. We could do this the rest of the year. But we're giving you, like, the main points points, and some of the things that happen that we, we see can, can happen to someone else. But we can speak about this, and it touches us very dearly. One, because we went through it. Yeah. And... Thank God and thank you for the Holy Spirit that we were able to take her out of the church. Yeah. You know, to take her out of the church. So um, I feel like we have the authority mm-hmm. 
You know, we have authority to be no, able. No, we do. And so, um, you know, if you need help, I'm available. <laughs> you know, I can go to your place and we can <laughs> get the Jesse juice out, you know. But, uh, no, but seriously, um, it's very important. And, and just be careful, pastors, leaders, wives, you know. Like, I, like my wife was saying, the Jezebel spirit, I really feel like she put a curse on her. Um, and one of the reasons why they want to eliminate the wife is because they want to get close to the pastor. They feel like, so like they're going to they marry. Can rule. Yes, yes, because that way they can rule. They're closer to the power, you know, like the pastor. They're closer to the pastor. Mm -hmm. they, get, they, they, they remove the wife. Mm -hmm. They get closer to the pastor. This is, what they, this is how they think. Mm -hmm. This is how they think, that they can get closer to the pastor, and now they have more power or more, they can do more, you know, in the church. So just be careful. And if you are a just if you do, if you're being influenced by a Jezebel spirit, first of all, like Pastor David says, check yourself, check yourself, because if you are a leader and you're seeing this characteristics, these strongholds that are starting to develop in it's you, bringing division, you know, and you're causing, you're starting to cause division in, in the church or you know ask the holy spirit and if you you are being influenced by this spirit repent renounce turn from that and turn to god and ask whoever you need to ask for forgiveness your pastors whoever for forgiveness change before it's too late god knows your intentions he says he knows the intentions of your mind and your heart yes so therefore, it's time for you to repent if you are. Being Number one is accept. Yeah, accept. It. Accept what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Accept what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Second, repent, mm -hmm. renounce. Mm -hmm. And third, ask for forgiveness to your pastors, leaders, or whoever it is. Yeah. So that's what we can tell you. We can go on and on and on, but... I'm only limited to so many minutes. Yes. No, but listen, mm -hmm. if I pray that this has been a blessing to you, pastors, leaders, whoever is watching this. And even if you may have the Jezebel spirit, let me just add this real quick. Maybe you don't know that you have the Jezebel spirit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's, 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 that's why it's very important that we analyze ourselves, that we ask the Holy Spirit to search in the depths of our hearts. Check your relationship. Mm -hmm. How is your relationship? Are you always trying to tell your husband what to do? Are you always or trying... Or maybe you don't want a husband because you don't want no one to tell you what to do. You don't want authority. Yeah. You don't want to have to answer to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know? Ooh. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's we can so. speak on this subject. And maybe next week we'll speak on another one. I think one. we should continue. I think we should continue. And just continue to move forward with this. Um, we have a lot of material, a lot of. Um, Ex we have a lot of testimonies. <laughs> testimony, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> we have a lot of testimonies. So if this has been a blessing, I pray that it has. And uh, for pastors, leaders, and even Jezebels that are out there, you know. <laughs> and repent. <laughs> Repentance. Repent before it's too late. I could tell you what they did to Jezebel. Yeah. No, Je no, no, no. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it for we'll next leave week. We'll leave it for next week. All right. Yeah. We'll leave it for next week. But if you want to read the Bible, read the Bible and read on Jezebel. Read on her. Um, first Kings, Second Kings. Yes. Revelation. First Kings, Second Kings. So I guess this is it. Listen to me. We love you. We pray that you're doing well. Uh, if this podcast has been a blessing, share, like, and, and, and comment, and um, just Okay. Listen to it and read it. I mean, listen to it and just listen to it over and over and yeah. watch it. And if you get delivered, you get delivered. You could get delivered in the name of Jesus. So thank you for joining us. We will see y'all next week. God bless y'all. We love you. May God bless you. May you see miracles, signs, and wonders the rest of the week. May you have testimonies. In Jesus' almighty name, we love you and we'll see you again. Amen. Bye-bye.